Hi, my name is Bobby Dietz, and this video is about how to offer subscription checkouts to prospects and customers. The most obvious point here is to grow your business and number of people that you get money from every month, improve your lifetime value, improve your cash flow, and make your business much more stable. Uh, if I'm going to start a product at any time, 90% of the time, I'm looking for a product that I can offer with some sort of continuity billing. If we run into clients that don't offer subscriptions, we always prepare a nice presentation about what the potential is. And some brands decide not to offer subscriptions because they just want customers to buy their product when they want it. They don't want any of the muckiness that can come along with subscriptions. You know, your cust lower customer satisfaction ratios, call uh, customers calling in being unhappy that they got billed or can't figure out how to stop the billing. Maybe they get billed three more times and they forgot to call and they keep getting billing now and build another frustrated calling. A lot of brands want to avoid that, but I'm telling you the benefits for a subscription outweigh the risks greatly as long as it's done correctly and you make sure that you can cancel easily and effectively quickly and customers aren't taken advantage of ever in any way. So let's talk about how to do those things. First thing to show you is different ways to offer the subscription. First example is Kapari, and they have a really clean subscription button right below uh, the straight sale option. And you'll notice as you go to that checkout page that the, the straight sale version is automatically selected, not the subscription. A conservative move by the brand and not going to offend anybody. No one's accidentally opting into a auto ship program. They have to make a conscious decision to change, select that button and get the subscription to save a few bucks. Dr. Axe, uh, blown up over the last couple years, is another great example of somebody offering a small discount to subscribe to the product in a very straightforward, clean way to do that. One of the most popular systems for setting up a subscription like this is with a company called Bold. Uh, you can use that to shop for Shopify. It's one of the most popular versions. There's links in the description if you want to try and access that real quick. The next way to offer a subscription is more subtle. It's less obvious. It's more of an automatic opt-in. Uh, a good example here is by Fabletics. If you see the whole disclosure there, you'll notice that just the very first line, which is important, but maybe you skim over, tells you that you're opting in for a membership program. But with all that text, and if somebody's making a quicker purchase, they're probably not reading everything, which likely happens, and that's what creates frustration after month two or three when people are automatically rebuilt. But it's going to bring down your traffic costs so much and you can offer such a discount when you rebuild people, you have to weigh those options. The second option is on it. They do the same kind of subtle disclosure below the checkout button, which is typically a no-no, but that company is so established and they've got, I'm sure, a very big legal team that's allowed them to do that. Ideally, you wanna have the disclosure above the, the checkout button because it, it is something that you can show your merchant processor to say that you're giving people every chance, every speck of information that they need before they make the ultimate a charge my credit card decision. Also, if you read the way that they've written it, it's very clever. They like to show a lower dollar amount first and then show the higher dollar amount. I would recommend copying that if you end up trying this more subtle uh, subscription opt-in formula. They have perfected it. I'm sure it works real well. As a quick unrelated note, make sure that your call to action button like on it is a totally different color. Uh, it can be very helpful to get people to click through. If you're going to offer a free plus shipping model, which is essentially giving the product to somebody for free, all they have to do is pay shipping. Now, if that's a system where they've opted in to a subscription, it's essentially trial and you want to make sure that your disclosures are really upfront and very straightforward. See the other video I made about how to set up a trial um, it'll show you all the do's and don'ts of setting that up to make sure you uh, take care of your customers and your company. One of my most favorite ways to offer a subscription is discount month one. It automatically tells people that it's just your first month and then you are part of a thing and you're going to get rebuild without saying you're going to get rebuild next month. It's so obvious that it's a monthly billing with that language, a discount month one, and people can get proper disclosures, making sure that they're aware they're going to be rebuilt all throughout the process, but it gives them a benefit 
uh, sometimes a huge benefit. Uh, we like to discount even up to 90 or 95% on the first month's billing just to get people to subscribe because we know maybe they'll be on for four months, maybe they'll be on for 14 months. No matter what, we just need them to opt in. If they like the product, then they'll stay. And this goes back to the main concept of making sure you have a good product or uh, you're really gonna set yourself up for failure in this. There's no point in doing trials if people are guaranteed not gonna be happy with the product. By the way, some of the most effective ways of getting people on subscription is by the phone. I mean, if you get people that opt in and decide not to subscribe, just having flat out customer service reps call these people to see if they could subscribe or would like to try the product again is a really great way to convert. We have, cl we have had clients in the past that we took from doing exclusively calls to doing a lot more sales online, but no matter what, the outbound calls still do work. So I would highly recommend testing that, at least if you had one outbound person calling all day long just to see over the course of two months how many sales they got, do they pay for themselves. We've seen people with great success, not as good as digital marketing, but it certainly can be very effective. You don't have to just offer 15% discount to subscribe. I mean, it could just be free shipping. There's a lot of different things you can do. Perhaps they get a free gift if they subscribe and there's no discount. Whatever you do, make sure you use the rule of 100. If you have a $100 product or less, it is much more effective to use a percentage-based dollar amount. Whereas if the product is over $100, it's much, much more effective to use the dollar amount discount. It just appears to be a much bigger number. You can find more information about the rule of 100 in the book Contagious, which is linked below in the description. But overall, something to just kind of keep back of your mind to apply when you're trying different uh, discount or offers through the subscription model. So to talk about some of the disadvantages of offering subscriptions. The first is obviously the potential of set upsetting customers by hitting their credit card again. Not something that any company is totally happy to do at any point. You don't wanna upset people. You're decreasing your margins if you offer a discount of 15% or even free shipping. Any of the incentives if it's another product any of those kind of incentives decrease your margins, your profitability, which you have to weigh into your decision-making process about whether you wanna make it happen or not. Seth Godin talks a lot about you know, discounting being a race to the bottom, and I agree with that, but not for subscriptions. I think it's plenty okay to offer a subscription at a discount. It's a benefit to the customer, it's a benefit to the company, it makes things a lot easier. I think both sides can kind of appreciate the fact that it's not too big of a discount at 10 or 15% that anyone would really think that there's a huge savings. It's not like we're talking about 50% off here. That's more of a concern for the discounting element, is much more of a concern for the abandoned cart discounts, heavy uh, heavy sales on Black Friday. Some of the pros of offering a subscription are that it's very easy to implement. You can add this in really, really quick with a lot of the apps today, especially if you're using Shopify. And it gives you an opportunity to try a subscription without a whole lot of work. You don't have to pay a developer to build a whole new website if you don't want to. You can just add it in and see how it goes. There is a noticeable improvement in customer loyalty. You know, you, people are already subscribed to your product they, you are their choice for X item. And if you offer something else, if you do a line extension, you will now be able to hit them, a trusted, loyal customer, and the likelihood of them buying something else is pretty high. So there's a big benefit to that part too. It's not a certainty, but it's likely that your conversion rate will increase. Uh, as there is a discount in play now, people are likely to be more like, uh, apt to buy it if it costs them less money, even if they cancel after the 15 days they decide they don't want to get rebuild and continue with the membership, they at least got a discount. So they're then a lot of people think that they'll just cancel after 20 days or whatever before they get rebuild. And a lot of people do that. The point is, it, since there's a discount in play, you may increase your conversions. I mean, if you're watching this, you're probably a brand owner or CMO, digital marketing manager, something like that. Somebody who's interested in running the business and subscriptions can definitely help with making sure that you're meeting your sales goals, ultimately having product move smoother, more consistently. You can get orders that are bigger, get more economies of scale. A lot of benefits come with subscription just in the operating the business side. I mean, if you make changes to your cold traffic model and conversions go down, at least you have a guarantee that you're gonna get X amount of dollars from your subscribers. Just imagine being able to run the business with 2,000 subscribers, even if it is at a 15% discount, because you know 
they're not going to cancel and you know obviously there's a churn rate to keep in mind but i'm just saying it's beneficial to have that steady income coming in even if you do have to pay more for those customers overall i definitely recommend a subscription based billing model as opposed to discount based billing model uh, you know you're getting loyal customers when you have subscribers not price-based customers. The ultimate goal as a digital marketing agency for us is always to decrease price sensitivity, increase brand loyalty, get the lifetime value up, and a subscriber count is a really great way for us to measure ourselves as to how, how much loyalty are we creating in the brand and what's our overall value for these customers we're acquiring. They're not based solely on the cheapest version of this hat they like the hats and they want them sent every month or whatever the company is. The other side of that coin though is that if you have heavy margins and big sales goals, to accomplish those goals, it might be the discounting model that is better for you because you get people to take action quicker and more often than you do on a subscription model. And if you're trying to meet aggressive, like I said, aggressive KPIs, it can be a much more effective way to go. We've done both. Both can be very effective. It's just different strategies for the brand and the way they're trying to accomplish their growth plan and how fast their growth plan is and what it looks like. I'll have to talk about discount offers in a separate video. This one's just about subscriptions. And if the video is made by the time you're watching this, click the link below and you can go to it. You really need to decide if you want to have a portal, a customer portal or not have a customer portal. Uh, basically an area where somebody can log into their account and adjust their subscription settings. That can save you a lot of money with customer service but might not necessarily get you the best lifetime value out of that customer. Customer service reps can do a spectacular job of saving sales, saving subscribers, saving members, getting them happy. You know, somebody who's about to cancel or change their subscription, customer service rep might throw some product at them and suddenly they're happy again or say, okay, yeah, well, I'll stay on board. Or they can push them out for 60 days, 90 days. I've seen it pushed out six months before they get billed again, depending on the product. But that's not something that's gonna be offered to people typically if they go in to their own portal and cancel. Now, there's a lot of different strategies on best practices for preventing cancellations. The next video I'm gonna make is all about preventing cancellations, different strategies to deploy, uh, three or four step paths to put people down if they want to cancel and preventing them from doing it. It's a very tactical, very uh, strong investment to make is preventing these cancellations, not stopping people from canceling, just strategies to help them uh, not cancel. We'll talk about it a lot more in the video, but just make sure that before people can cancel, they have to call. Email and instant message is not gonna cut it. I'll talk a lot more about that in the separate in the next video, but for now just keep that top of mind. I'm Bobby Deets. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, all those things that let me lets me know if this kind of content is interesting and you enjoy it. Uh, we own a digital marketing agency and if you're a brand owner or a CMO, digital marketing manager, and you have any interest in us performing a digital audit for all your campaigns, tell you the good, bad, and what's possible out there, uh, we're more than happy to do that. We do it all the time. It's free. Sometimes we'll find nothing when we do these audits and sometimes we'll find a lot of egregious errors. Either way, we'll be very honest with you. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'm Bobby Dietz with Attention Agency.